In this video, we are going to see how to use AWS RDS with Django Python. And for this, I've created a sample e-commerce sign up and a login page. So on this sample e-commerce website, I do not have an account. So I'm going to go to sign up and it will redirect me to the sign up page. So I will sign up with my name and email ID. Uh, password would be uh, let's say one two three four one two three four and once I click on sign up it's uh, going to go to the MySQL table which is connected to our AWS RDS so once that is done it says account has been created and please log in with those details the one that you just put and you can log into your account so the email ID was password was 1234 so 1234 so once I click on login it is going to take me to my account home page so that was the first name that I gave and so it says welcome and this is the home page of my account so in this particular uh, video we are not looking at sessions right now so that is not something that I've implemented yet but uh, in my upcoming videos I will definitely do that and you will get to see how to use for how to implement sessions as well and once we before we go ahead uh, with the video i expect or i assume that you already know what django is how it works have some background on aws rds as well and knowing python would be beneficial since since everything is on python okay so let's let's see how the code works so before that, I let let me show you the entry that we just uh, and registered. Uh, as a user registered, and that was the password. Okay, so the data has been entered onto your MySQL table. So let's go. So before we go to the code, let's go to the AWS part. So if you log into your uh, console. And click uh, go to redirect yourself to RDS. So this is what is going to get you. This is the page that you're going to go to. So click on create database. So for this video, I had used used the standard create one. There's an easy create as well, but I went with the, with the standard one. So go to MySQL. Choose your version. Make sure you use the free tier part give your database instance name and this is your master username remember this you are going to use this uh, while connecting your RDS to your MySQL workbench okay put your password something that you can remember confirm it let's go down keep all settings the way it is the default ones for now I am not connecting to an EC2 compute resource I, I would suggest make this public and then try to work uh, until and unless you're working on something uh, personal project which is which has sensitive information but yeah you can go for a public public access and all the other things are by default values the default values that's it so click on create database oops my, my bad So it's creating the database now, uh, the database too. Okay. So the endpoint is not there yet. Once it is created, you can see the endpoint. But uh, to access the RDS, you need to set the inbound rules as well. So click on the so go to the connectivity and security part and click on security groups. It will redirect you to the C2 management console. And this these are the inbound rules you need to edit the inbound rules and add mysql aurora here and make sure it's anywhere ipv4 add one more rule which is the http make this anywhere and then you can click on save rules and you're done 
right and go back to your rds i've already done this i don't want to do it again since it's an ec2 instance so it might charge me that's why i won't do it again i already have it for the actual one the one that i showed you earlier and you can view it in your database section so this is the one that i had created earlier and this is the endpoint so copy this endpoint go to your mysql workbench i hope you have mysql workbench as well go to your home and click on the plus sign here give your connection a name okay so the host so the endpoint that you copy right now is actually your host name okay the username is something that i told you to uh, make a note that was during creating the database that was admin okay so with this you can actually test your connection so it says successfully made the mysql connection click on ok so you can actually store the password that you uh, put during the database creation and that was admin admin so if you do that you can put it over here Okay, click on OK. So I've got this. So this is the MySQL connection and it's opening the editor. Okay. So this is the schema. And if you see, uh, I already got the schema that I was already there since we are using the same endpoint. But if you use a different endpoint, it won't be there. Okay. So if you wish to create your own schema, make sure you come over here click here and create a new schema if you wish to create a table then you can simply click over here you see table right click on this it says create table click on this it says new table give the table your name and click on the column or on the column name below just give whatever columns you need right and it will and after that you just need to click on apply and it will create a SQL script for you and you can click on apply and it is going to create the column for you. Okay. So I'm not going to do this since I already have everything created. So this is the uh, table that I already created. Okay. So this is the initial setup that you need to do with AWS, RDS and MySQL and the previous setup that is related to Django. I hope you already know what it is. If you don't, don't worry, I have the code on my GitHub. You can go and check over there and make sure you fork it or clone it. Okay, so that you don't make any mistakes. Now let's look at the code part. All right, so in Django, we have models, views and URLs. Okay, so the structure that I've kept is I have a, I have a site that is a project and then I have a web app, okay. Inside the web app, I've created a file called as urls.py, which is managing my URLs. So if you've seen my earlier videos, uh, I had you had done a similar thing with uh, Flask. Okay, it's very similar, uh, at least the logical part, uh, but the structure is very different from Django since Django is a different framework, but uh, you can actually relate it and it would actually help you, okay. So there in Flask, it was a little different. Here, it's a little different. So in urls.py, we are going to mention all the URLs that the users can go to. Okay. So the first one is a simple no URL and it's just the local URL and that redirects to the function home. And the function home is in, in is inside the views.py file. So let's go to the views.py and see what does the function do. So here is the function home. It takes in a request and it simply renders the index.html so index.html is actually the home page that you saw from where we redirected to the sign up page okay so that that's that's it that's all the first line here the seventh line does okay let's move on to the next part now the user has reached to the sign up page okay so in django i've created a folder as templates and inside that I have all the HTML pages. So inside this, I have the HTML page 
inside the signupedge.html i have a form and that form uh, triggers the register action when the submit button is clicked so this is the submit button if this is clicked it's going to trigger the register action now this particular registration action is actually in your urls.py so this is the path that is executed when you actually click on the submit button on your create an account home page or the sign up page okay so this particular path goes to the function called as get data which is again in the views.py so let's move on to the views.py yeah so i do have a function called as get data so get data what does it do it will take that you put on the website on a sample website it will take the last name email and password okay so i have all the information the next task is i just need to insert this details onto the database your database is also connected you just need to make sure that the data goes into the database so for that i have created a function called as insert details details right and this particular function is defined into the models file folder the models file okay so let's go to the models.py so this is the models.py file and to use to write sql queries here i have used a library called as py mysql and you need to install this before you go ahead so before even before we put our uh, query and the data goes into the database you need to connect it to you need to connect your local uh, like just the way you did for mysql workbench you need to connect your code to the aws rds so that's where the uh, endpoint link again comes into picture this is the endpoint link and we need to use pymysql.connect function and provide these details okay this is what you did while uh, put while creating the database from on aws okay so the db instance name is uh, the D so you need to be careful with the db schema and the table name right so registration underscore detail is the table name this is the schema name okay so make sure you don't mix it up or your database won't connect okay so here is a function that was called from the views.py so if you see it just takes four parameters and we have a connector and that connector is going to actually execute the uh, sql statement right so if you see it goes into the table all the four values that is first name last name and email and password and then that's it you commit your data right so this is how it goes inside the sign up data table okay the next part is the login part now you need to make sure that you get all the data that was used during sign up and compare it with the input given during the login page from the user Right. since in this video the data is very small and i just wish to show you how it works i have uh, fetched all the data from the database onto the django web app backend and i'm going to compare each and every entry with the user input okay so before we go to that part you need to see how to get all the details so this is the comma this is a SQL query to get all the details fetch it into a variable and return that variable and that variable is returned to views.py with this particular function that is login underscore data okay so the email and password has been taken the next next part is we need to check whether the entry is present in the database or not okay so for that i have used the get details uh, function and stored all the user data in user underscore data variable after that i am just iterating over it and i am making sure that the email which is at the third position since i had taken primary key as the id right so since there won't be any repeat values so the third name if so if the third name and the password which is the fourth element match it is actually going to render your local or your session home page and it is displaying your name so that is what we saw right i got the first name and i got the home page and this is what we wanted to do after it is authenticated uh, with the database so this is this is what uh, we can do with django and aws rds you can add more data you can add more pages and make it more 
interesting uh we will i will put some uh for uh, videos regarding sessions as well since uh after every login there's a session that uh, gets is present and that session that session part is still yet to be developed once that is done i guess i can put that into the into the next video so this is what i wanted to show you in this particular video i hope you learned something and if you like our content please like share and subscribe